So Samsung's Galaxy A series smartphones only sit on the entirely beneath the S series flagships, offering a similar One UI experience but with more modest hardware to bring down that cost a wee bit. But the fresh new Galaxy A95 G is a very different barrel of monkeys indeed. This beastly 6.7 inch handset boasts full 5G connectivity, as if the name wasn't enough of a giveaway already, and that's something not offered by the standard S10 or S10 Plus, the current flagships. Now, of course the A90 also in cheap, rocking a 670 quid price tag here in Blighty, the same cost as the more modest Galaxy S10e. Of course, Samsung has already unleashed a 5G smartphone in the world in the form of the super premium Galaxy S10 Plus 5G, but that thing won't just drain your wallet, it would also empty your pockets and probably cost you a kidney or two as well. So if you want a future-proof 5G Samsung blow without spunking out over a grand, then the Galaxy A90 5G seems to be a reasonable solution, but is it actually a decent all-round smartphone for everyday use? Well, I've had my SIM stuffed in there for over a week now, and here is my full in-depth Samsung Galaxy A90 5G review. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ending that notifications bell. Cheers. Now first up, while this handset rocks a premium price tag worthy of the S series handsets, the A90 definitely takes more design cues from the rest of the A series. Samsung has rather cheekily slapped the infinity display label here on the Galaxy A90 5G, despite the fact that it's clearly got bezels bordering that screen on all sides. And yeah, it's not exactly the chunkiest set of bezels in the world ever, but you definitely do not get that pleasing curvature that you get from the S series phones and also many rivals around this price point. This panel is definitely completely flat, but I do really like the split finish on the reverse side. Each quadrant sports in a different shade. The lighter section comes to life in a rainbow of colours when it catches the sun, an effect which is definitely rather stunning. One thing's for sure though, this Samsung blower ain't as tough as many rivals. One unexpected tumble from a short distance onto a hard floor later, that shiny rear end is now scarred for life. The incredible slipperiness and fragile nature of the A95G is a sphincter clenching combination indeed. And when I say slippery, I mean slippery. This thing is the bloody lemon of the smartphone world. I swear if you put it down on any desk or table that isn't completely flat, as soon as you avert your gears it'll start inching its way towards the edge with suicidal glee. And that's why I definitely recommend slapping some sort of case or cover on it, even though unfortunately it will ruin the aesthetic some moss. And yes, Samsung has also culled the water resistance for the A95G as well, so keep it well away from bathtubs and the like. Now here on the A95G you get a Full HD Super AMOLED screen, not Quad HD, but I've got no complaints on the quality of the visuals. Movies and pics look beautifully crisp despite those dimensions. And as usual you can mess around with the colour output, although the default Vivid mode serves up some proper eye candy, so I just leave it on that to be honest. It's bold, it's bright and it's ideal for multitasking thanks to the sheer size of the bugger. And yes there is a nipple notch poking its way unceremoniously into view when you go full screen, but I never really found it an issue, it's suitably subtle. On the audio I was somewhat gutted that Samsung has unfortunately killed off the headphone jack for this here Galaxy A90 5G. Thankfully the Bluetooth connectivity is absolutely fine, nice and reliable, and the mono speaker output is pretty punchy and loud. It's just a shame that there wasn't a proper stereo speaker output on here. You also don't get to enjoy the latest Android 10 features as the A90 5G is still running Pi, but Samsung's own One UI 1.5 launcher adds in most of the better bits including a proper dark mode. You also get tons of great additions including some one-handed help, and always on display and effective face recognition to complement the usually pretty good in-display fingerprint sensor. Sadly, the optional gesture navigation system isn't quite as intuitive or enjoyable as Android 10s, and of course, as usual with Samsung, there is a lot of doubling up of apps and services. And as usual, of course, that includes two virtual assistants on one smartphone, which seems a wee bit extravagant. But beyond that, I really don't have any complaints. Despite its quite heavy handedness at times, the Samsung One UI launcher is definitely one of the better manufacturer efforts out there. Definitely no worries on the performance front either. The speedy Snapdragon 855 platform is backed by 6 gigs of RAM, so you get the kind of premium experience that you would expect at this price point, even when smashing through some of the most demanding titles on top detail levels. Speaking of which, Samsung's nifty game launcher and game booster features make a welcome return, complete with full notification blocking, performance monitoring, built-in Discord support and loads of other gaming tools on top. And while the Galaxy A95 G uses Qualcomm's older Snapdragon X50 modem instead of the fresh new X55, you of course get full spectrum support here in the UK and basically worldwide and I found that those download speeds were certainly super nippy when you eventually hit a pocket of 5G support somewhere in central London. Do you actually need 5G right now? Well that is definitely a long discussion for another time but even here in London the coverage is still pretty sparse. It's definitely more a case of future proofing than anything else. However while the connectivity definitely gives the A95G a leg up over many of its rivals at this price point it's the battery life that is the true star of the show. That 4500 mAh cell combined with the energy efficiency 
Snapdragon architecture means you'll easily make it through a super intensive day, even when you are abusing the heck out of this poor thing. With moderate use, you'll even make it through a second full day, while the 25 watt fast charger means you can get just enough juice for a lengthy commute with about 5 to 10 minutes at the plug. There is no wireless charging support here on the N90, though that's something else that was slashed in order to save costs. Personally, I'm not really bothered, but I know that is a big deal for some. Now, last up is the camera tech, an area where Samsung has been surpassed by many rivals of late, even in those flagship phones, and some sacrifices have once again had to be made in this area for the A95G compared with those S10 devices. Like the S10e, there's no telephoto lens. You get a 48 megapixel primary shooter with f2.0 aperture, backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a simple basic 5 megapixel depth sensor. Also, then slashed is the dual aperture tech as well as the optical image stabilization. So, the camera hardware has unfortunately been slashed, but how does the photo and video quality actually hold up? Well, my full in depth Galaxy A95G camera review is live right now, so go check that out for all you need to know. In conclusion, the Galaxy A95G is a bit of a strange beast. That asking price definitely places it firmly in premium territory and yet it can't compete with many of its rivals when it comes to the likes of the camera tech. So basically if you're dead set on being an early adopter of 5G then the Galaxy A95G is a reasonably affordable way of doing it. Of course there are other alternatives like the Xiaomi out there so go check those out. That's it if you're definitely not absolutely sold on 5G though then go check out some alternatives like the Huawei P30 Pro, the OnePlus 7T and the Asus Z Phone 6 as well which are better all-rounders. So that's what I think of Samsung's Galaxy A95G after using it as my full-time personal phone after a week but what do you think? Definitely let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more of the latest to greatest tech. And have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.